Listen up, Friday afternoon, end of September, Crow Race Queen Stage with a pretty soft parkour. We're doing this in one take, team. From Kirk, which has no vowels in it, always difficult for me, to La Bin, 191 kilometers, does have nearly 4,000 meters of climbing in it, but a lot of it's gradual, particularly the HC climb, 2K, 5% or 6% uphill cobbled finish. Could Ineos drop Anderson? I've been saying Anderson, stop saying that I'm saying Anderson, I just can't, it just sounds like Anderson, but I'm saying Anderson. I know, I know it's Anderson. But anyway, I don't even know if there was a breakaway. Uh, there was Abrahamson going for the KOM points because Jayco, from the time coverage started, they were on a mission to control this stage despite Ineos having two GC guys up there, despite Car having Al despite uh, DSM having Only, and, you know, to make sure that, to make matters worse, Dunbar spent a lot of the time in second wheel because why not spend more watts than you have to or more than the other GC contenders during the middle of stage when nothing is happening. Before the intermediate sprint, Ineos did a lead out trying to get Ethan Hay to the maximum bonus seconds. Plap and I think Swift did a good job of that and Hay to, or maybe it's Tarling, uh, took those. Parasini and Burati or Govacar for Bahrain was second and third. So good points or, or bonus seconds for Hayter. And then it settled down again. And so, yeah, Ineos got two cards to play. Anderson was already dropped, so it's Oscar only, who's their GC guy at this point. And Uno X were also controlling. Who for? Couldn't tell you. Uh, maybe for Kristoff to win the stage, but there's no breakaway. And so you'd think these teams that don't have the stage favourites or the GC favourites would be wanting to conserve riders to position them into the base of the final climb. But anyway, 12.6 Ks to go. They do it the, uh, the first time, and it was kind of weird because a Porter was actually quite strong for Jayco today. I like the look of him. Plapp was also in good shape. Uh, but yeah, it looked like... I don't know if Dunbar was attacking because this is the first rep, and it is steep at the end. The last 200 metres takes them a fair amount of time. He's got Sheffield on the wheel, only uh, Rougier, Adria, who's off to Bora next year, also in the mix. But it, nothing happens on the first climb. Plaps there to just keep things tranquilo, and then Sheffield actually attacks over the top of him. I think only marks him or someone from DSM, and then Ikipo Kone Farmer closed that down for Adria, as well as Bahrain, not wanting anything to go up the road. So Christoph also came back, Shvernes, Versnes, the Norwegian champion, trying to bring him back, and then there were attacks as well. Jaco controlled, and then they went on a fly with little Trek. Uh, Simmons has been a little bit, dis well, not a little bit, he's been disappointing this race, frankly. I thought he could have done much better in this race. I don't know if he had an issue today. Um, there's no live tracking for the race. But now we've got the lead-outs into the final climb. We've got Parasini being kept in good position by Q3 6.5. Tarling keeping Ineos safe before Plap takes over, as well as Uno X train on the right-hand side. Morich is there next to Aula. He was positioned into the base, and then he's happy to always freelance in these sort of finishes. And Morich, if you've seen in Twitter Polonia, he's gotten better and better at these sort of finishes. He's won, I think this year he won some, maybe last year as well, sort of, 2Ks, 5.5% with a sprint at the end. He's just really, really good at those. Obviously, though, he's out of GC because of the Stage 1 crash. And I was keen to see, or interested to see how Aula went against Ethan Hayter. Now, Hayter beat Superman Lopez in a cobbled finish uphill in Andalusia uh, maybe two years ago or the start of last year at this point. And so how would he go? Would Sheffield lead him out? Would it be every man for themselves? Swift pulled off. And it looks like Sheffield is, in fact, leading him out because, you see, he's gone to front the white jersey. Aula sharing his wheel with Hayter. Christoph's there. Morich is actually boxed in and deep behind only. Parasini's also not in the best position. I'm assuming that's him uh, quite deep as well as Adria. Adria's in good, a good spot. He's got Aula there and Hayter. But, yeah, it was kind of curious because I thought as a lead out, Morich has to launch really, really early, like 250 metres to go. And I thought, wow, he's... With Sheffield going this hard, if Hayter just is able to kick, Morich has started to sprint so early, surely he can't win the stage, but in fact, Hayter can't get out of the saddle and kick, and it's Sheffield that's the strongest Ineos rider. Morich gets to jump on him, gets to the barrier, Sheffield into the draft. When he actually starts sprinting Sheffield, you'll see it better in the overhead. He, yeah, he goes straight past Aula. Adria, I think, was going to come third. Then he has a mechanical over that bump that costs him two positions. Morich wins the stage. So, 
bittersweet for Morich, showing how strong he was in a finish like this. And you can see Sheffield sees him and then he's like, oh, I better sprint now. And he gets to his wheel quickly and almost, he comes out of it straight away. You see Adri was also stronger than Aula, but that mech really cost him. But yeah, Morich, he probably would have won GC, but shoulda, woulda, coulda. They should have dropped more riders back to help him on stage one. And he also looking really good now with Sheffield taking a, an uncomfortable one second lead ahead of Aula, but they also got Hater on four seconds who can take bonies at sprints, but it's going to be difficult to manage because the next two stages are pretty much sprint stages except for maybe March is saying, ha ha ha, gotcha, uh, to both of them. I don't know what he's saying. Um, he's saying you're probably going to win GC anyway if you play your cards right. Wins the stage ahead of Sheffield, Ala third, then Hater, Adria, Dinam, Feta, Otruba, Berardi Fernandez, then Dunbar, 10th. Can't see Unox there in the top 10 at all. Here's what Moritz had to say after the stage. After my crash in the first stage, obviously the chances to take to win the race overall became very slim, but we wanted to show our uh, dedication and uh, the focus to still uh, bounce back as a team. Uh, we never give up and uh, we wanted to win the stage today to, to prove the point. And uh, the team did a perfect effort. They led me out uh, nicely and smoothly to the bottom of the last climb. And then I knew that uh, when I got uh, a gap uh, or a, an opening space to, to start my sprint, I just uh, went all in all the way to the line and uh, it was enough to take the win. So yeah, I dedicated to the, to the team behind Victorious today. Are you as a team still fighting for the GC? I'm not sure what the situation is today, but the group was uh, very big with most sprinters still present because the race was not uh, crazy hard. Uh, over Uchka we did a nice tempo, but not uh, not full gas. So I think most sprinters are still in contention. And having lost uh, more than a minute in the first stage, I'm probably out of the GC. But uh, the important thing is in life when uh, something bad happens that you don't lose your focus and uh, you still try to do the best you can. Thank you very much. But yeah, as I said, GC is tight. The top 10 is separated by less than 10 seconds. So the intermediate sprints are going to be key in this race. Aula is the best group sprinter maybe, but Parasini just won one. I really can't wait to see how it pans out in the next two stages. Will Ineos send or DSM or a climbing team send the opening 20k climb tomorrow? I hope so. And I'll see you the recap then. Ciao.